In this edition of JavaScript Problems, we're going to deal with an exercise from the very popular book, Eloquent JavaScript. This particular problem was posted on a Reddit discussion group looking for help. So I thought it would be a good candidate for JavaScript Problems. I believe this particular problem will have something to offer for both the person starting in JavaScript and anyone that has more experience because I'm going to show a couple of different ways to solve the problem. That is one of my favorite things to do with JavaScript problems is to find different ways to solve them. I enjoy the flexibility of JavaScript. So let's first take a look at the problem. So first, write a range function that takes two arguments. And the arguments are start and end. And then it returns an array containing all the numbers from start up to and including end. Then write a sum function that takes an array of numbers and returns the sum of all of those numbers. And this is how we'll test it. We'll chain the functions together. So range is going to return an array between 1 and 10. Sum will then take that array and add those numbers together. And then console.log will print the results to the console. So if we do this right, the result should equal 55. So that's what we're going to do. If you want to go ahead and try this on your own, go ahead and pause the video and give it a try and see what you come up with. All right, let me jump to Sublime and we'll get started on this problem. So first I'm going to define the range function. As mentioned, we need two parameters, a start and end value. Now we need to go about returning an array that begins with the start value and ends with the end value. So I'm going to create an empty array. And then I also want to create a counter. And I'm going to set that equal to the start value. I could use the start value for the loop I'm going to structure. But by creating this new variable, count, that keeps me from changing the start value. All right, I'm going to use a while loop. So we're going to run the loop. While the count is less than or equal to the end value. And then what are we going to do inside that loop? Well, first thing we will do is push to the array the count value. So the very first thing that goes on to the array is the number 1. When we pass in 1 and 10, 1 is the first thing that will go on to that array. Then we will increment that count value. And so then it becomes a 2. When it goes through the loop the next time, we have a 1 and a 2 in array, and so on. It will do that until it is greater than the end value. So the end value will also be put on to the array. That will happen. Finally, the last thing we want to do is to return that array. So we have our range function. Now let's go ahead and create a sum function. Now the parameter that's passed in for that is an array. So that's what we're going to accept. Now we need to return a total of all of these numbers. So I'm going to declare a total variable first and set that equal to 0. Now this time I'm going to use a while loop as well. In both of these cases, we can use a for loop. But I've chosen to use a while loop. I'll show an example of a for loop in just a minute for this sum function. And I want to run the loop while the length of the array is greater than 0. Now, why did I choose to use that as the condition for the loop? Well, because I'm going to pop a value off of the array. Each time I add it to the total, I will pop it off of the array. So in the end, the array is going to have no values in it. 
Now, if I wanted to prevent changing the value of that array, then I could assign it to a new variable. So inside the loop, I just do total equals total plus array.pop. So we pop off a value, add it to the total. And then, of course, we want to return the total. All right, now we have our first example ready to test. But before we test it, I want to do a second example of the sum function. And this is using a for loop, just to show the difference between those two loops. So I'm going to copy that in so you don't have to watch me type the whole thing. And I'm calling it sum2. We start with a total variable like before, but this time we have a for loop. And so we have a variable i. And we're again checking the length to see if i is less than the length of that array. And then we increment i. And then we simply total equals total plus, And then we go through each position of the array using i. So that's how we would do that in the for loop. So with both of those in there, let's go ahead and test both with a console log statement. So first we'll do sum and then range. And the two numbers are 1 and 10. And then let's put a semicolon at the end. Move this up a bit. And then console.log sum2 range. Do 1 and 10 again. Semicolon at the end. So let's look at the results of this before we go on to the second more advanced example. All right, let's go ahead and refresh. I will open the console. And there we get 55 and 55. So in both cases, they work correctly. We created a range, and then we were able to sum that range. And both functions are set up so we could use different input values via the parameters. All right, now what is the more advanced solution that I was thinking of? Well. As I started thinking about ways to do this, I thought, well, I wonder if we can do this with recursion, the range function with recursion. And then with the sum function, when I first started with it, I was automatically thinking of using the reduce method of arrays to solve the problem, since it's really meant for that kind of thing. So what we're going to do is use recursion on the range function, and we'll use reduce with the sum function. I have tutorials on both of these topics. So if you'd like to see another tutorial on recursion, I'll include a link to that in the description section. If you'd like to see a tutorial on the ES5 methods that were added to arrays, which includes reduce, I'll include that one in the description as well. So let's first create range 2. Now I want it to stick to the assignment. And the assignment specifically says, passing in two parameters, a start and an end value. So initially, I was having trouble solving this with recursion by sticking to that requirement. But then I thought, well, let's just use closure as a way to solve this. And if you need to look up a tutorial on closure, I have one in that as well. And I'll include that in the description. So. I'm going to set up an array inside of this function. And then I'll also set up a counter, similar to what we did before. Now, since these are set up inside the function, that is their scope. And therefore, any function I define inside of the range2 function will have access to those variables because they are of the same scope. It'll create closure over those variables and can continue to access them. So that's what I decided to do is I would define another function. And this would be my recursive function. And so I'm defining it using a function declaration as opposed to a function expression. We're passing in the counter value. And then let's look what we're going to do. So recursive function is a function that calls itself until it's told to to stop. So we need to figure out at what point does it stop? Whoops, I just noticed a misspelling here. Let me fix that. Now the point that it's going to stop 
will be if the count value is greater than or equal to end. That's when I decided to have it stop. And then what will happen when it stops is it's going to return the array has access to the array because they're in the same scope dot push. So we're adding something to the array as we return it. And what we're adding is the end value. Because if it's equal to end, we still want to add that to the array before the array gets returned. And so that's what we do. But if it's not finished, if we still want it to continue creating the range, then in that case, we push count onto the array. And then we simply call the function again. But this time, we pass in count, but we increment it. Now, something that I was reminded of as I was doing this exercise, it's an interesting little nuance with the increment operator, is that I started putting it this way and things weren't working. Well, the reason things aren't working is because it passes that count value before it increments it. And so what we want to do with this increment operator is put it at the start of that variable. Okay. All right, so we have a function inside of a function, and this is going to be called recursively until the range is complete. But now we need to start that function. We need to call it. Now we could do it as an immediately invoked function expression. That would be a way to call it, but we can also just simply do it this way. And then when everything is done, we return the array. So that is our second range function using recursion and still sticking with the requirements of the exercise. I wanted to make sure I did that. So let's do the second sum function now. Now this is going to be sum three because we already have a sum one and a sum two. And we're passing in an array. That's what we'll receive as the parameter. Now remember, I said I wanted to use the reduce method of arrays. Now the ES5 methods that were added to arrays, they were meant for processing arrays. And they were added for functional programming. Reduce is a particular one that is used in functional programming quite a bit. Basically, what reduce does is it takes an array and reduces it and returns the results. And the way it reduces it depends upon the function you pass in. So reduce is a higher order function. It accepts another function as a parameter. And so we would pass in a function that would tell it what to do with each value in that array. So let me enter that statement first. So we take the array and we do a dot reduce. Now we need to pass in a function. So I'm going to do an anonymous function. Now that function receives two values. Reduce automatically sends it two values. And the first value is the accumulated total. So whatever is the accumulated results based upon the function you pass in, that's what will get passed as the first value. The second value that is passed in is the value in the array. So it will go through each value within the array and it will pass them in one at a time. So now let's define what the function will do. So basically we want it to return the total value, the accumulated value that is passed in plus the value from the array. And so the first time through reduce with the very first value, it's going to add a one to the total. And it will return that. That return value will then become the TOT for the second time through. So it'll be a one and a two in this case. And so that will those will be added together. It will return a three, then a three and a three, and so forth. That is how reduce works. Now, we're almost done with the sum three. A lot simpler to do 
with that reduce method, but we need to return the resulting value. So I need to add a return statement here. So that's sum three. So range to sum three. So let's go ahead and do a console log of those. Sum three, range two, and we're going to pass in one and 10 just like we did before. Put semicolon at the end. Save that, let's jump out. All three cases are returning a 55, so they're all working for us. So two ways to solve that problem and things to learn from each of those methods. Things to learn about the loops we can use and things to learn about recursion and the reduce method of the array. Now if these are new to you, it can sometimes be helpful to add a console log statement inside the function as it's executing to see what is happening. For example, adding a console log statement inside of increase count to see how count is increasing as it moves through and is called recursively. Sometimes that can help you understand them better. And as I mentioned, I also have tutorials on those topics elsewhere which you can look up if you would like. Hopefully you learned something from that and you found that helpful. If so, I'd appreciate it if you would like the video. You can visit our website where we have all the tutorials which we have published categorized into different categories. So you can find the different tutorials that may be helpful to you and take them there. We also have courses on JavaScript. To view another tutorial from our YouTube channel, click the video link in the center of the screen. To subscribe to our channel, if you haven't done so yet, click the circle link on the left. And to visit our website, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.